So I am going to share next um, a little bit about me. I'm an educational consultant and recently published author of a book called Raise Your Hand. And um, my background is I was a um, middle school math teacher for five years and then went to business school and I'm now here. So a lot of what I'm sharing today is in the context of the K through 12 school system because that's really where my experience lies. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And one second. All right. Okay. Thumbs up if you can see that. We're good to go. Awesome. All right, so thanks for being here today. Um, my presentation is Raising Our Hands for Consciousness. And this is a quote that resonates with me deeply, which is joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. And I know that as I've gotten older, this has been something that resonates with me more, finding joy in the little moments, when I look out into nature, being with loved ones. Um, but I was really lucky because growing up, I really knew what joy felt like. And that was because you could always find me on a stage. So I feel this is very timely after Yelena's presentation because since the age of four, I was dancing. I was always dancing at every wedding and um, every Indian function that you can find. I trained classically for seven years and when I was on stage, I felt alive. I felt that the whole world would dissipate and I was able to perform and creatively express myself in a way that I didn't always feel when I got off the stage. Because a lot of times when I was off the stage, I was in school. And when I was in school, I went to a school where every day, I would walk into a classroom and go to my assigned seat, open my backpack, take out my notebook, my pencil for the day, sit quietly and look at the teacher in front of me for the lesson of the day. And there were all these rules. Raise your hand, don't speak without permission, line up straight. Did you ask your teacher? Did you ask your parents? Are you sure you're allowed to do this? And so for so long, I felt that I was in a place where the spotlight was not on me anymore. It was someone else's stage and it wasn't mine. And I just feel that every kid <laughs> deserves the type of joy that they may feel in other parts of their lives, also in their learning and in their schooling. And one of the biggest things is our inner selves. And so this is my big call, which is to raise our collective hands to bring more joy and more consciousness into our current school system. And a lot of my perspective is from the United States because that's where I currently reside. And creating a system that actually cultivates the inner self of a child and who they truly are. And I think a lot about the stats that we see most recently which is that one in six children are diagnosed with a mental health illness, 1.2 million students drop out of high school in the US every year, and 29% of students experience student apathy. So the question becomes, is it the kids or is it the system? Because if the system is failing so many of these kids from who they truly are, then is it working? And this is where the mind body spirit connection comes in. I think a lot of people can argue that the mind is cultivated in school with our intellect and our learning. Our bodies, a lot of us maybe had phys ed or had to move our bodies in school in certain ways. But when it came to that inner self, that spirit within us, 
and the joy that we felt, our intuition, our energies, a lot of that was not cultivated in our schooling system, even though that's a big part of who we are. And so I think about this framework, um, which is con conscious connected contribution. And ultimately the idea is that we bring more consciousness in our humanity by first looking at ourselves really deeply and understanding ourselves, our inner selves. Because when we do that, we're able to connect more deeply with the people around us and our surroundings and ultimately contribute to the universe or humanity as a whole in some positive and uplifting way. And this is something that I say a lot, which is systems are made up of people. If we want a system to change, people have to change first. And a lot of times what I've seen in education is that we get the frameworks, we get the pedagogy, but we are still the same human being. And it takes a lot of internal work to be able to do this work in a conscious way. So first we have to really deeply look at ourselves and really try to become conscious of many different things. And one of the first thing that is, and going to stakeholders here, you know, this is parents, school leaders, teachers, it's kind of every adult in the system going, are we here for the child? Are we here for their joy? And what does that actually look like? And what does that actually mean to not make a school become about who they become, but who they are right now? And what does that actually look like? And it starts with us, right? Um, unlearning is a big part of that. It's asking ourselves difficult questions, like what was my schooling like growing up? How was success message to me? Is that what success looks like to me now? Is that what success looks like for my child? Is this system resonating with my child? And if not, why? And it's asking ourselves those difficult questions, which can be hard because a lot of times we have to take pride in our own education um, and we identify with it, including myself. And so it's hard to question something that has brought us to who we are today. But the question is just because something is good now does not mean it cannot become better for the future generations. The next thing to ask ourselves is how to really be authentic to who we are. As children, a lot of times we give up being true to who we are in order to belong, in order to be validated and accepted by our parents and our teachers. We want to be loved. And so we kind of put on a mask so we can be accepted by the world. So what does it mean to deconstruct that and become authentic to who we truly are in our truth? And this also means there's a lot of healing involved. It's really looking deeply at our past and our experiences in order to heal and move forward. So the reason I mention all of this is because when we're trying to transform a system of schooling, for example, for our children, it cannot happen until we're doing this individual work ourselves and becoming conscious of who we are. Because I truly believe that every child <laughs> deserves an education that makes them feel like this that makes them feel joyful and excited and they feel connected to who they deeply are and they feel empowered because life is going to have its ups and downs but they are equipped with their own understanding of themselves and conscious so that way they can contribute to the world in a positive way. And I speak a lot about this in my book. And so if you're interested about consciousness and education, I had the privilege of speaking with 70 educators all over the world about what it means to be conscious in our educational system. Um, and so I talk deeply about my childhood, my schooling and kind of how I've evolved that over time. And I'll end with this. This is a Nelson Mandela quote, there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. And so if we do this, if we become conscious of who we are and connected, then maybe our children in the next generation can grow up to who they want to be, not who we want them to become. Thank you so much. All right, um, I will put a link in the chat, but we're going to go ahead.